All right, not much going on today. I'm uh, just uh, going to give a final brush over of my uh, lighter fluid on the clay to get it ready for Jim Dolan, who's coming to pick it up today, to uh, take it to his foundry that he's working with. And uh, I guess I'll get this started. Anyway, I'm just uh, the lighter fluid has a tennis uh, is has a quality that it literally melts the clay a little bit and uh, smooths out those areas that need to be smoothed out a little bit. It's just a finishing thing that you do. So that's going to be pretty much it for today. I'm sorry it's such a short video, but uh, it's just the way it is today. All right, everybody, have a great night. And uh, if you will or are interested in learning how to sculpt, I am adding to this video my video on uh, how and where to buy my DVDs and uh, showing you briefly what's on each DVD. All right. Good night, everybody. Have a great day. I thought I'd take a break uh, from my clay that I'm working on and talk to you about some of the uh, things I have for sale as far as instructional DVDs. To hold it once so you can see them all. But uh, I will uh, definitely uh, show you each case separately and the DVD inside and uh, then show you a small digest, uh, Reader's Digest style review of each DVD. This one is creating a life-size bust using a life-size armature uh, you can buy from Trueform Armatures online. From uh, the base to the top of the head is uh, just about 25 and a half inches tall. And this video here, I take a true form armature uh, from trueformarmatures.com uh, and I uh, start adding clay to it to show you how you can utilize this wonderful tool, this, uh, this uh, armature that's uh, foam and, and resin and stuff like that. Uh, to, to make a portrait I'm making of uh, a guy by the name of Henry Roman Nose, who was a Southern Cheyenne uh, warrior and chief. And um, so through this whole thing, I show you measurements, how to uh, block in things, even using uh, plastic knives to, <laughs> to line up uh, the width of the shoulders. And uh, so I just uh, enjoyed the heck out of creating this piece. And after I was done with this video, I actually uh, uh, expanded on the piece a little bit, took away a little bit, added a little bit, and changed it a little bit. But basically, it is a portrait of uh, Chief Roman Nose. And uh, I show how to lay out the muscles, I show how to make uh, the hair, how to fill in uh, behind the hair so you don't use all that much clay doing it. And all that's in the video itself, and uh, I'm not going to show you here. You have to buy the video if you want to see that part. Now, this is of an Indian, of course, uh, but uh, you can use the information you get from these DVDs for just about anything or any subject matter you might uh, want to uh, sculpt. So, this one here is creating a horse bust, so to speak, a uh, horse head and neck, uh, and I show how to make the armature and... Uh, all the way to the finished clay, even to the making of the uh, mane and making it look uh, reasonably good, like hair. All right, uh, this is the first day of a new instructional video that I'm going to be making. And this one will involve the making of a horse's head. And this uh, shows a, a skull that uh, was sent to me by a friend up in Oregon. Uh, I use it to uh, help me uh, whenever I sculpt a horse's head because 
the skull is very important to the uh, shape of the face and uh, and the structure of the face and I show that in this video here I am uh, adding clay to the uh, the horse and uh, and the armature that I made and I show you how to make the armature and and all that I even tell you how much clay uh, I put uh, it took to do this so that you can plan yourself uh, plan your own uh, little horse bust you might say it's it's very important to get the little nuances on the uh, skull here I'm adding the first muscles uh, at the nose of the skull uh, the mouth here I've already added the uh, two tubes for the the, the nose and uh, now I'm working on the uh, neck of the horse. Uh, believe me, this is uh, really condensed. This, uh, all these videos are well over an hour. This one, I don't remember how long it is, but I think it was probably an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and 20 minutes, something like that. Uh, all the videos are over an hour long. And here I'm just starting to lay the uh, uh, mane on the horse and showing how to uh, make it look like hair instead of tubes of clay. Again, uh, it, it's oh here I am uh, putting here the copyright. Are. Here we are, and that's what it took to do this piece with six pounds of clay. I hope you've enjoyed this DVD. I've enjoyed bringing. It. This is uh, a DVD on how to create a full figure of a woman. Uh, in this case, it's a, uh, a Southern Cheyenne girl named Sweetgrass. You get the DVD and then you get a certificate of authenticity and the certificate is embossed with a uh, notary style embossment that I've been using since I started sculpting in 1977. And so it's only on my certificates that that embossing comes on. All right, this is a true form armature and it's the uh, 24 inch tall. I'm going to sculpt the female figure first uh, without clothes. I'm going to get the under body first before I start putting the clothes on. This uh, video covers about uh, six months of sculpting on this piece from start to finish to the uh, bronze. Uh, here I am starting the uh, head and that clay head in the background is uh, a clay that I'd done, had done years ago of Sacagawea and I just wanted to uh, use it as a model for her face. Uh, here I show you how to uh, put the head back on the body and then I start uh, positioning the, uh, the figure. And this whole idea for this piece came from one pose that I took of a uh, young uh, lady who lives over in Virginia City, uh, a daughter of a friend of mine. And um, I show you how to put the clay on, how to build the under uh, surface that goes below the clay or the uh, dress. Uh, here I'm showing how to make a uh, fringe and I try to show you how to do all these things so it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg when you cast it. It's still going to cost you a lot because bronze casting is inherently very expensive. But I'm taking my 38 going on 39 years of sculpting uh, and trying to pass it on to you through these videos. Um, here I am uh, just starting to add uh, clay so that I can put hanging fringe off her sleeve. Uh, you got to have stuff underneath the fringe. And here I'm working on the face, trying to personalize it a little bit. And the, the face is pretty much coming out of my head, but I'm also using photographs of uh, young Indian ladies to uh, do the face. And uh, braiding hair, doing the hair. And then I uh, end up in a gallery in Tahoe uh, at the end of creating of this piece uh, last uh, summer. And uh, I finished up the clay at the, at the uh, gallery, actually. Uh, here I'm laying down the bead uh, uh, p uh, thing that's going to go on there. And then I'm putting in the pattern of the Cheyenne uh, beadwork, which is rather complicated. And I'm also working on the face and finishing up things like adding uh, an earring here and an earring on the other side. And then at the final part of this, this DVD, uh, these are all separate DVDs, by the way. Uh, I show you the original bronze. Uh, this is the actual color of bronze once it's cast and sandblasted. It's actually a white metal that uh, you can polish up, 
make it look like brass. And then here the uh, guy at the foundry was putting on the patina, which is done with acid and, and heat. And this is the final bronze. This one is of a full figure of a female holding a baby. Again, you get the uh, DVD and the certificate. Uh, you got the feet and stuff like that. Everything comes apart. Uh, well, you can take the uh, rib cage off, and work on the upper part, or, or adjust the, the height of your. All right, this is my uh, fifth and last DVD. Um, not necessarily in the order it was made, but uh, again, I'm, I'm creating here a uh, baby uh, being held by a mother, uh, Sacagawea. Uh, Sacagawea, if you didn't know, is a historical figure from the Old West. Um, here I start putting the clay on the uh, armature. It's an 18-inch armature here, and that's why uh, it doesn't have... Uh, the bones in the arm because uh, it's it's too small for that. Uh, it does have the leg bones. That's nice. Here I'm showing the uh, the uh, positioning of the hips and the shoulders, and starting to add the muscles and the legs. Now, because she's going to have clothes on, I don't worry too much about every nuance uh, of tendon and muscle because it's going to be mostly covered by clay anyway. This was the first positioning of the baby that I came up with. And uh, after running into a lady in a restaurant, I decided to change that because she was holding her baby a completely different way. And uh, I took pictures of her with my iPhone and uh, came up with a better design than I started out with. Uh, here I'm using a, a Native American lady's face from the movie uh, Black Robes uh, from years ago. Uh, here's the uh, new positioning of the baby, and I'm just uh, adjusting things and trying to make it look uh, motherly and loving and uh, by bringing the two heads of the, of the uh, baby and the mother together. And this is the uh, idea for the blanket that I'm going to have around her. It, it was for, taken by photograph of a lady at a mountain man rendezvous. And uh, here I'm working on the baby's face, which is not easy. I hate doing baby's faces. They're very hard, very un-adult. <laughs> This one is of a uh, full figure of a mountain man. Uh, I changed the design a little bit between this one and this one later on, but I, I haven't produced a DVD on that. Um, I put the two figures together. Uh, of course, you get the DVD and the certificate. Went to the studio uh, yesterday uh, to get a couple of things, and I came across in a box the remains of a sculpture I did. A few years back, uh, it was of a mountain man on horseback, and he had just traded, or a, a beaver pelts for a brand new Hawkins rifle, which he had across the saddle. And I this is the rifle shot of the same man, and um, scaled the skull again to the eight and a half inch, and that gives me the distance between the, the shoulder blades and the shape of the shoulder blades, so that uh, when I start sculpting this, I, I've got everything scaled. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, you know, how to plot out the arms for the uh, armature. I'm just uh, drawing a black line to the wrists. This way I'm not wasting a lot of my uh, armature material. Uh, just to where the uh, middle of the thing is and then go up. Still following the same, the width of the yeah, as a uh, full armature uh, for the uh, man. And the, you know, developing the thickness of the thorax. And I'm going more by eye than getting anal and taking every measurement. Uh, everybody's different. Alright, what I'm doing now is I'm flattening out a piece of clay to make some skin. The clay won't stick to this tool, so I can just go over this and, and blend it in 
the, the key is to make the the, uh, the skin thin. One of the tools I use is a uh, pasta machine. It's just a simple kitchen, everyday kitchen pasta machine. All right, I put put the uh, clay on the shirt or on the uh, bottom part of the uh, strap that holds the shot pouch. And now working from the bottom up, I uh, start moving these little cut pieces of clay into position. Your time is valuable if you spend a lot of time messing around with little fine details that will never show up. It's just a waste of your time. I'm going to uh, take this uh, strap off that I put on and worked so hard on and put it from this side going down here because uh, this blanket will cover the pouch and I don't want to cover the pouch. All right. Clay where the uh, clay did not adhere to the cloth, thus uh, making it a lot easier to do I'm it. Just now. establishing the uh, position of hair and uh, eye sockets, the bottom of the nose, and the mouth. Going through the full process of giving them a mouth and lips and all that is well, it's defeated by the fact that you're putting a beard on them. Very delicate work because his eyes are looking in a certain direction. I want to give him a little personality. I'm going to raise his eyebrow just a little bit. Sort of like he's looking up. So as you can see, I've done his face. You can see the figure of the mountain man and the Indian woman there. And uh, that's uh, how I combined the two figures. I took the uh, blanket off his head and uh, put his arm around and over her sh uh, left shoulder and uh, he's drawing a blanket up over the both of them or around the both of them. This is the first one I ever produced uh, and it's sculpting a small male bust, uh, non, you know, it's, it's not Western. Uh, it's just a, a bust of a, a man with a beard and I show how to make the armature and uh, give you all that information. So down through the years I've taught myself how to sculpt. I'm going to try to pass on to you uh, in these videos that I'm going to be producing uh, a little bit about uh, how uh, I do my uh, work and uh, create uh, things like uh, this face here that uh, I made oh years ago. It was It's all that's left of a life size or larger than life size uh, clay I did of a cowboy. First thing you need to do is All right, uh, from armature to clay on this uh, first DVD that I produced. Uh, it's uh, a DVD that I produced uh, showing how to sculpt a male bust in clay. And here I'm showing how to make the armature, the first clay, uh, taking proportions and making making adjustments and stuff like that, and then starting into the portrait itself. Uh, what, uh, I start with the skull, I, I add the muscles to the skull, uh, then I just, uh, you know, at the end of the video, I, I kind of have fun with the, uh, the face. This one, uh, I show how to create a full figure of a horse uh, in, a, in motion, and uh, adding a uh, human figure to that horse. In this case, a uh, warrior, and uh, of course you get the uh, certificate and uh, the DVD. Of course, if you didn't get the DVD, you'd probably be sending me a letter. Armature. Uh, All right, this is a convent, uh, condensed version of uh, this DVD on creating the horse and rider. And I start out <clears throat> showing how to make the armature using a drawing of a horse scaled to the uh, scale that you want to uh, make the horse, the, uh, the size. And uh, here I'm mounting it on uh, the base that uh, I'm going to be sculpting on. I designed this to uh, look like it's coming down a hill. Here I am making an appearance at a local uh, shop up in Virginia City, Montana. Uh, a friend of mine ran the shop and uh, she asked me if I'd come up and 
do this for a day, and I, I did over uh, actually very, for two very days. When you're working in and uh, I started a horse there uh, by creating the skull and and taking the measurements and all that stuff. And I talk about uh, the tail is usually the last measurements, and, and I try to uh, show you how to uh, add the muscle to it and all that stuff using, of course, uh, lots of uh, good reference. Uh, paper and material, keeping in mind that when the uh, animal moves, uh, this is the, uh, his uh, horse, bone structure uh, moves with it, that you can use to, and uh, I try to show that as well. Uh, muscles and stuff like that of the horse, as well Here as I'm adding the figure. Structure. I'm not uh, actually making an armature. I'm just adding clay, clay and sizing it the, uh, uh, to fit the horse. I don't want to make the figure too big or too small. And uh, I'm just um, showing you a quick way to add clay to sort of block it in. And here I am just trying to contemplate what I'm going to do with this figure. Um, I've taken the horse head and I'm working on it separate. It's a lot easier to set up a temporary uh, jig so that you can uh, work out that as well as the uh, warrior's face and putting on the, the wolf skin headdress. Here I am nearly finished with it. I'm just putting the finishing touches on it. I'm finally starting the tail of the horse. And I also show how to do the uh, mane on the horse. And here it is, finished in bronze, colored, and uh, ready to be shipped to Italy. This is where this one ended up. Is a tour of a foundry, uh, Northwest Art Casting up in Bozeman. And it's taken from, oh, gee, it's got to be several years of uh, uh, videos that I uh, shot at the foundry, and I put them together so that you can see from taking the clay to the foundry, mold making, and all the other stuff. And this is about a 30-minute uh, DVD. Most of the other ones are over an hour. Uh, some of them are an hour and a half, but this is the shortest one, 34 minutes. And for that reason, uh, I don't charge as much for this one. This is about $20 off of the uh, normal price of the other DVDs. And of course, you get the certificate and the DVD. Now, I may have other videos in the future, uh, but for now, I just wanted to give you a review of, or show you um, the eight that are available as of this date. handle. I'm trying to fan them out so you can see. Oh, okay. So there are my uh, eight DVDs, instructional DVDs, and uh, I ship all over the world. I have no problem shipping them, and I don't change the price of the uh, shipping or mailing and handling. Uh, shipping and handling is the same, and uh, whether it's going to Mongolia or to uh, Timbuktu. All right, that will be it, and I uh, hope you found this interesting. Now I need to get to work on this guy back here. Wait to get it on there. A Day in the Life of a Lemon, block dot blogspot dot com. That's my website, and uh, when you get there, this is the, the home page, and you'll see up here at the top, Right hand column, get my thing there's here. a buy now t uh, tab right there. And what you do is you just click on this uh, little drop down uh, mount here. Map. And then right at the bottom is this clay to bronze, which is the uh, founder tour. And as you can see, it's uh, not as expensive as the ones above. If you don't understand anything on this page, here's a uh, language uh, thing here. Uh, you just drop this uh, menu down and you can select any language uh, that you speak.